Let's have a look at the foundation or trailer settings in the 3D Tiny House Designer. So to get started, the foundation or trailer settings are all the way in the top left here in the exterior panel. And we'll just click on that and you will see those settings come up here on the right. And the first thing that you will see is the foundation or trailer type. And at the moment we have a flat deck trailer selected. So with a 3D Tiny House Designer you can design tiny homes on wheels but you can also design standalone dwellings or ADUs or even container homes. And we have foundation and trailer settings for each of these. So to get started, um, I will show you all of the different types that there are. So there's the flat deck trailer, the fender trailer, which is the same as a flat deck trailer, only that you have a little uh, wheel arch around the wheels. Then you have a gooseneck trailer, which I will get back into in a second. Then you have a foundation, which is, well, a solid foundation. This could be a placeholder for a concrete foundation or a pile foundation or whatever works on your side. And then we have the structural floor. And the structural floor is useful when you are building a removable dwelling that you will put on a foundation on a site, um, but the building would be transported there, so it would need to have some kind of structural floor. So the cladding actually continues past the foundation and goes all the way to the bottom if that makes sense. So I'm just going to go back to the flat deck trailer here to get started and we will have a look at the base settings. The base settings that you will see are the length, width and height which define the footprint of your tiny house. So if you want to change the size of your tiny house you would come into the foundation settings and this is where you change the size. Let's get started by, let's say, changing the width, uh, sorry, the length. Uh, and I will just use a 30 foot length like that here. And you will see that the length is added on both ends. So rather than adding it into the front or into the back, it's kind of like scaled in both ways. And that will be the trend for all of the other settings as well. So let's say if you add some width by making it 10 foot instead of 8 foot, it will be added to both sides. And the height, which is important, is from the bottom of the ground. So you see the grid pattern over here, which is the placeholder for, a, say, the, the side floor. And the height goes from all the way from the bottom to the top here. So this is the top deck of the trailer or the foundation, and it's measured from the top down to the bottom here. So let's say if we change it down to one foot, you can see this move further down. And this would also include let's say any like structural flooring panels or something like that but when it comes to the flooring itself that would not be considered in that height here so i'm just going to set it back to eight foot wide and 28 foot long and just as a quick reminder i have another tutorial for this but you can change where all of the interior is located so you can bulk move everything at once so if you let's say changing the length of your tiny house or the width of your tiny house and you need to move everything in the design you can do that quite easily uh, with the bulk interior move tool all right so that's the length width and height the next setting that i will show you are the axle settings and this defines how many axles your trailer will have. Of course, if you have a foundation, this setting wouldn't pop up. But at the moment, we have three axles here. We can change this to, let's say, two axles or four, three axles, four axles, even one axle. One axle is not nearly as common. As a quick tip, of course, if you don't know exactly what all of those settings are, you actually have the tutorial panel here, which shows you what each setting does. So that is the axle count, I'm just going to set it back to 3. And then we have the distance from front. So this is most important when you're designing a trailer with a wheel well or with a fender. So I'm just going to quickly switch it back to a fender trailer here. And you will see this box pop up around the wheels here. And with a fender trailer it's very important to design around that trailer and you need to be able to copy basically the exact trailer that you're going to get delivered by your trailer manufacturer so you can design around it in the software. So at the moment it shows that the distance from the front of this fender box to the front of the trailer is exactly 12 feet. If we want to change this we can type in let's say 11 feet and you will see the entire fender box move. And this way you can just replicate the specifications of your manufacturer. So now that we are already in the fender trailer, we might as well have a look at the fender settings itself. So there are two options. You can either have an automatically sized 
fender if you don't yet know exactly how big the fender will be and it just automatically sizes around this uh, around the wheels or you can have manually set fender sizes so this is again important if you already know the specifications of your trainer manufacturer so at the moment the length is set to 8 foot 2 inches and a 16th but let's say if we want to set it to exactly 8 feet you will see oop, maybe we want to set it to 8 foot 6 like that there we go uh, it looks like I couldn't go smaller because the wheels were already blocking that if that makes sense um, but yeah so in this case you can see here it's 8 foot 6 here um, and then you can just replicate the dimensions of your trailer manufacturer specifications and then you can also put in the height and the width of your fender box so that is the fender settings right here and now let's have a look at the gooseneck settings so the gooseneck trailer is a trailer that you would run into mostly in the United States and that's just simply because the regulations for tiny homes allow a trailer like this and a gooseneck trailer is usually a truck trailer that you would pull on the back of a big semi truck and this usually allows you to have a more heavy duty and larger trailer um, the interesting part about it is that you usually have a tongue that sticks over the truck which it attaches to which then allows you to add a little bit more space on top of that so it's kind of like a half loft if that makes sense and you can also change the settings of this gooseneck and the height of the gooseneck here can be set right there um, and the height of the gooseneck actually applies to the from the bottom of the or from the top of the trailer all the way to um, the underside of that loft panel the thickness of that loft panel can actually be set in the shell settings later on. So let's say if I would have typed in four foot here, it would go from the top of the trailer to the underside of that loft panel here that covers the gooseneck trailer. The length of the gooseneck can be set here. So let's say we'll set it to six foot, for example, and this just sets the length of this bit from here, from the very front of the tiny house, off at the bottom to the very front of the gooseneck so what you'll see here we of course had a larger window <laughs> already and this has just moved it up to the top of the gooseneck as best as it could and I will just quickly then have to move it again to bring it back to a spot where it makes sense of course so I'm just gonna go back and change it to a regular trailer and you will see the overhang of the gooseneck is still here I will go into shell settings later, but to quickly revert this, I'll just go into the front end here and set it back to a standard overhang, meaning it doesn't have an overhang. And you'll see the window is still popping out here, so we can actually click on this window and then move it back onto the facade like that. I'll just quickly put it somewhere here in the middle. Great. All right, so let's look at the rest of the trailer settings, or in this case, it's not trailer settings anymore. Um, but we'll just have a look at foundation and structural floor, which I already showed at the start. And they are very simple. You will just set the length, width and height, which just sets the boundary of the entire house. 